All right, so number nine says find the indefinite integral. Listen, we are finally to the good stuff as far as integration goes. It's called u substitution. Check this out. If I have 2x minus 4y is equal to 6, and I have x plus 3y is equal to 8, this was way back when you did systems of equations with algebra 2. A lot of us would see this, and we would multiply this by a negative 2 and do elimination method and get rid of the x's, right? And we'd be able to see, solve for y, and then we use that to solve for x. We've done this, okay? Very few of us would actually use substitution and rewrite this next equation, the second one right here, and we would use this so that we have this x is going to be replaced here, so that we have 2, and the goal of it is, why did we ever do that? Why did we do that? Help me out. Why did we do that? To solve for one variable. We're trying to write the equation in terms of one unknown, not multiple unknowns. Substitution is what we did. You with me? Now, that is our approach with these types of problems, but it's multiplication, and it's in an integral. Okay? So, let's go ahead and look at this. Your goal is to look for, and I erased a little bit too early, your goal is to look for the biggest parenthetic piece that you can find. Okay? So, look for the biggest parenthetic piece that you can find. So, in this problem, the biggest one that I see, that I'm going to assign as u, is going to be 6x squared plus 4. Okay? Now, if I were to rewrite this original equation, I'm going to do it off to the side over here, and I'm going to rewrite pieces and parts of it, what would I replace as 6x squared plus u? What would I put over here in my new equation? By substitution, what would I put? u. Okay? Now, now that I've picked up this piece, I'm no longer looking at it, the only pieces that remain that I have not accounted for are x and dx. Do you agree? Okay, so now, use substitution, within the process of use substitution, I'm going to do a little bit of deriving. I know it's been a while since we've derived, but I'm going to derive, okay? So, and it's going to be implicitly derived. You tell me, what's the derivative of u, just by itself? Okay? These are differentials. So if u is du, what's the derivative of x? dx. Not just one anymore, okay? We're taking it in respect to like differentials. So help me out. What's the derivative of 6x squared with that chain rule feel of multiplication? 12x dx. So 12x dx, and we know that is just going to zero out. Are you with me? Okay. So my goal is to find these pieces that I have highlighted in green. Get this. They're right here. Now, it's easiest to kind of get them all by themselves. And I like to show you guys to divide by 12. So that now, the thing that we highlighted in green in the original problem is going to be substituted with that. It's like you're coding it or translating it to Spanish, if you will. Translate it to another language. What are we doing? We're rewriting something that's been given to us in terms of x that we were integrating in respect to x. We're going to use another variable to solve the problem out and then throw it back to the original language, if you will, of x. Okay? So, where I used to see one half dx, or sorry, when I used to see x dx, I'm now going to put one half du. So one half du is going to be like one half du per se. Or my bad, one twelve. Thank you. So the one twelve, I'm going to write here. Why did I pull the one twelve out? Constant multiple rule. So all I'm integrating is u to the fifth du. 
So let me ask you a question. Let's say you mistakenly, because sometimes people, they write this. Every time that you write this integrand with no in respect to, you will lose a point. Let me say that again. If you don't write du, every single problem, you can lose a point. So please make sure that you write du so that I know you know what in respect you're supposed to be at, at any given time. If I wrote dx, this is the one time that I will say, mm -mm, you didn't misspell du, that's incorrect, okay? Because can you mathematically integrate something written in terms of u from what you know right now when you're taking the integral in respect to x? You can't, okay? So this will be du. Let me go ahead and rewrite it. And now we can take the antiderivative. All right, so let me make some room here. We're going to integrate u to the fifth, which becomes u to the six over six. Multiply constant multiple rule the one twelfth in. And what am I missing? Okay, so I'm missing the plus c. So look, right here some magic happens, okay? So let's pretend we go through a portal, if you will. The math happens to where when you integrate it, you have this interpreted position function with plus c. And what you've just done graphically, u to the fifth looks like this. Actually, something like that, per se. And we're looking at a certain um, area underneath the curve, if you will, interpretation. When we take the integral, guys, when we take the integral, we're doing the Riemann sum. You with me? We're doing the Riemann sum, but of infinite um, rectangles. So when you take the integral, the du and the, and the summation symbol, they disappear. They disappear, okay? Let me ask you this. Do you think multiplication occurs there? Yes or no? It does, and it doesn't. Look at this. Isn't this the derivative of, let me give you another example problem. The derivative of 2x in respect to x is 2. Is this true or false? It's true. Now, is this dividing by dx? No, it's just saying it's in respect to dx. There's no division, per se, going on. Just like there's no multiplication there going on. This du, theoretically, is only representing the width of each of these rectangles that we did with Riemann sums. And that du is trying to approach what number? Zero. Theoretically, that's why it's there. Notation-wise, it's just because it's in respect to u. Are we good? But when we take the integral, it disappears. The du is no longer there. All right. Why is my answer still wrong right now? Because i got to plug back in in terms of what? In terms of x. So remember, I chose the biggest parenth parenthetic piece to be u. And when I get to my answer, guess what? I'm just going to go back, and I'm going to put the 6x squared where the parentheses was. Okay. And hence, that's why you get the 1 over 72 times that quantity plus C. Any questions?